Alright, Becky and Luke here, and uh, I thought that uh, answering all the questions and trying to respond to every single one of the messages that I got on uh, a lot of the videos that I put up recently would be just too impossible and take too long, so I thought I'd just, you know, get on camera again and make a, a small kind of vlog, I guess, if you want to call it that. As you can see, I just got out of work, um, but... Uh, yeah, I really do appreciate all the emails recently, and I uh, love the comments. Uh, some of you guys really crack me up. It's like, is there anything you can't fix? It's like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Got a bunch of broken stuff laying around here. I wish I could fix everything, but uh, unfortunately, you know, some of the stuff that I try and repair, I just uh, I can't figure it out. In some cases, I can figure it out a couple of years later, but uh, it doesn't uh, happen all at once. But yeah, I really do appreciate all the em the, uh, the emails and all the really kind messages and responses. It really means a lot. Thanks a lot. Um, if, you, if it weren't for you guys uh, watching and, you know, commenting and stuff like that, I just really have no reason to make this uh, stuff, you know. Try and make the videos to help people out and uh, hopefully give people some insight as to some cool gaming machines or some, you know, ways that I've repaired stuff over the years and uh, how they can do the same or maybe some machines that people haven't seen before and kind of show them off and let you get a chance to see what they're like. But, um, yeah, uh, I really do appreciate it. It means a lot. So I'm going to keep, uh, keep trying and <laughs> trying to fix these old machines, see what I can do. But, um, yeah, I had a, a couple of, uh, I, I've had actually lots and lots of people asking about, um, like, the machines that I repair, like, wow, oh, Luke, you must be a millionaire, or something like that. Like, people must say, like, wow, I bet you he's flat broke, you know. And um, if you look at the, the machines that I get in, uh, the machines that I pick up, usually they're all broken, or they're rusted, or like the last one uh, that you saw, it's all kind of filled with spider eggs, and like, just infested. You know, I'm not, I'm not paying the actual retail value for these machines, but after I get done repairing them, uh, they are definitely worth a, a lot more than the price that I buy them for, you know. Um, and some of the machines, when I pick them up, you know, I can pick them up for like 50 bucks, but uh, in some cases they're worth a lot more than that, like the, uh, the X68000s, you know. Uh, they all depend, you know, it all depends on the price and it all depends on what's wrong with them, but uh, yeah, I don't wind up picking these things up for like $500, $600 and then like, wow, Luke must be rich, you know. Um, I do, you know, try my best to try and save these machines. Um, I know that a, a lot of the older stuff gets kind of tossed out, and uh, if it doesn't work, you know, many people just don't want to want to try and mess with it. But uh, I've always been one to try and, you know, give things a second chance, try and give uh, machines here uh, a second, you know, try, and so people can actually have fun with them. And, uh, you know, I, I do have a lot of the, the different duplicate machines, and what I do to kind of help other people out is, uh, maybe you've seen it from some of my other videos as well, but I'll take the machines that I get in, uh, if they're in rough shape, and I'll, you know, I'll clean them up, I'll repair them, and then I'll sell them off, you know, but uh, I'm not kind of like one of those cutthroat people who uh, you see on eBay who takes something that's really rare and valuable, and they know it's super rare and valuable, and then they jack the price up to, like, something ridiculous. I actually, in a lot of cases when I do sell these machines, I wind up losing money either on shipping or I lose money on, uh, you know, the, the value of the machine itself. And it, like I said, I'm not out to try and make money or anything like that. And I'm not here to collect, you know, every single game machine, you know, multiples of them and kind of hoard them for myself. Um, I do collect them and I do uh, repair them. And then after I get done with that, I wind up selling them off so that other people can have a chance to, to play some of these rare uh, kind of obscure machines. So uh, I know that uh, some people may be concerned, uh, like, wow, Luke, do you really need four, uh, you know, of those... Uh, Sharp X68000s. It's like, well, I don't need four of them, but for the people who will eventually want to get one, you'll probably be happy to know that you can get one for a really reasonable price as compared to, you know, seeing the ones that are broken and busted on eBay for going like $200, $300, you know, so. That's uh, that's kind of the main reason why I pick these things up in multiples. It's, uh, it's definitely not a way to, uh, to try and steal them from other people or anything, you know, it's, it takes a lot of work to get them going and stuff, so. Yeah, that's why you see so many of the, uh, the different game machines that I have. But um, Yeah, as far as other projects, uh, I've mentioned in other videos before, I still have the other projects that I'm uh, waiting on or working on. Um, that uh, Golden Tee Golf 2 board, still sitting up there. Uh, hopefully, one of these days, uh, the ROMs that uh, 
uh, Critch123 uh, had sent out. Hopefully those will show up in the mail. I know that the post system takes a, a long time and uh, we'll get a chance to pop those in and see if we can get that board running again. Uh, there's a couple other projects, you know, the, the Vectrex is still sitting there. Um, need to, to find some parts for that. Uh, right now, as far as that X68000 goes, is, is, I'm going to try and make a, a cable for it. I need a DB15 uh, pin cable, and then I need to get a VGA cable, and I need to, to cut and splice them together. But unfortunately, I can't find those DB15 cables right now, so I'm going to have to take another trip up to Hardoff and see if I can find them. And uh, if I can find those cables, I'll uh, you know cut and splice them and get them all ready to go and hopefully be able to try them out on some of my uh, other monitors, like my... Uh, LCD monitor and see if that works out. It should be something simple, but uh, I, I also want to get that other monitor working as well. Uh, it's something that I really love the clearness of the picture on those old CRT monitors. They suck when you go to try and record off of them, but when you're looking at them in person, it's like, wow, you know, that is awesome. That's a really bright color. That's really good, but um, yeah. So that's, uh, that's kind of all I wanted to say for this video. I uh, really appreciate all the comments. Really appreciate you guys checking out the vids. Love, uh, love the funny stuff, you know, the, the funny comments and things like that. But, um, yeah, I'll keep trying to see what I can do about, you know, bringing some of these old things back to life. And, if possible, telling you guys how to do it or showing you guys how to do it, even though, you know, a lot of the ways that I do things are, are pretty controversial for, you know, other people who repair things. Uh, nonetheless, I still am able to get them to, to run, and uh, they work, and that's pretty much all that matters for me, so... But uh, yeah, it's enough rambling for me. Just wanted to share that with you guys. And uh, once again, you guys rock. Keep the, uh, keep the gaming and retro community alive. Uh, don't let these old machines die. And uh, I'll try and do the same. But it's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon. So thanks for watching.